Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we made it to the end of the Elastic uh, Beanstalk overview, and that means it's time for the cheat sheet. So let's review. Elastic Beanstalk handles the deployment from capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto scaling to application health monitoring. So it really sets up a lot of infrastructure for you. It's uh, a good uh, time to use EB when you want to run a web app, but you don't want to have to think about the underlying infrastructure. And we just saw this big list of infrastructure above. It costs nothing to use EB, only the resources it provisions. So if it spins up RDS and ELB EC2, you're going to be paying for those, but EB itself costs nothing. Recommended for test or development apps, not recommended for production use. Remember, uh, when AWS says this, when they say for, not for production use, they're talking about super large enterprises who think that they can use Elastic Beanstalk for the production environments. If you're a small to medium business, Elastic Beanstalk is A-OK. -okay. Uh, you can choose from the following pre-configured platforms. We have Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker. You can run containers on EB either in single container or multi-container mode. Uh, these containers are running on ECS instead of EC2. Uh, you can launch either a web environment or a worker environment. Web environments come in two types. We have single instance or load balance. For single instance environments, it launches a single EC2 instance and it signs it an, EI, uh, an elastic IP address. Uh, uh, to that EC2 instance. For a load balance environment, it's going to launch EC2 instances behind an ELB managed by an auto scaling group. I didn't mention in the last one, but for the single instance environment, it is in an auto scaling group as well. It's just set to a, a one, a, a set to desired capacity of one. Um, but I don't think that's important for the exam. It's not a big deal. Uh, then you have your work environments. This creates an SQL uh, queue, installs the SQL daemon on all the EC2 instances, has an auto scaling uh, scaling policy, which will add or remove instances based on the queue size. Then we have EB has the following deployment policies. So we have all at once. So this takes all the servers out of service, applies changes, puts servers back uh, in service. Uh, this is super fast and has uh, has downtime. So that is one condition you have to think about. Then you have rolling, it updates servers and batches, reduce capacity based on batch size. Rolling with additional batch adds new servers and batches to replace the old, never reduces capacity. Then you have immutable, creates the same amount of servers and switches all at once to the new servers, removing old servers. You really, really need to know these deployment policies inside and out. So make sure you know the difference. And if you don't know, go back to the uh, lecture content, look at those diagrams and make sure it clicks. Uh, and then we're on to the last page here. So rollbacks, uh, rollback deployment policies require an ELB. So uh, rollback, it should be called rolling. So I, I meant to write rolling. I'll update this here, but uh, for the video, it's just going to say rollback. So rolling deployment. So rolling or rolling with additional uh, uh, additional um, additional batch policies requires an ELB, so it ca uh, cannot be used with single instance web environments. Just consider that. In place deployment is when deployment occurs within the environment, all deployment policies are in place. Blue green is when deployment swaps environments, so outside an environment, uh, when you have external resources such as RDS, which cannot be destroyed, it it's suited for blue-green deployment. EB extensions is a folder which contains all configuration files. With EB, you can provide a custom image, which can improve provisioning times. If you let Elastic Beanstalk create the RDS instance, that means when you delete your environment, it will delete the database. This setup is intended for development and test environments. Really do consider that. Um, and the last thing here is Docker AWS JSON is similar to ECS task definition file and defines multi-container configuration. So yeah, if you looked at task definition, you'll understand it. We don't have to go through the, the, uh, the guts of that here, uh, but this is generally what you need to know for the exam, but really know those deployment models, okay?